But we begin tonight just one week until the Supreme Court hears oral arguments in the most consequential case involving Donald Trump. Whether he can be barred from the ballot by the 14th Amendment for inciting the January 6th insurrection. Today, Colorado Secretary of State Jenna Griswold filed a brief urging the court to affirm the Colorado Supreme Court decision barring Trump. Griswold joins a long and growing list of figures who have flooded the high court with their views. From the Colorado voters who sued to block him to historians and this week, perhaps the most high profile legal conservative offered his position. Retired federal judge Michael Ludig wrote, Mr. Trump incited and therefore engaged in an armed insurrection against the Constitution's express and foundational mandates that require the peaceful transfer of executive power to a newly elected president. In doing so, Mr. Trump disqualified himself under Section 3. Ludig added, every provision of the Constitution is part of the supreme law of the land, not the inferior law of the land. That line should serve as a reminder to Trump's MAGA enablers in Congress who are engaging in performative actions for his benefit and submitting to Trump's whims, no matter how ludicrous or contrary to what used to be bedrock grand old party values, including, as The Washington Post's Aaron Blake notes, Republicans' acrimonious divorce from the rule of law in determining that they can apparently just ignore the Supreme Court because that's exactly what they're doing, dutifully going along with Trump's demand to foment another civil war by urging states to send National Guard soldiers to Texas, while that state simply ignores a Supreme Court ruling that the Biden administration can remove Texas razor wire on the southern border and federal agents can intervene to prevent migrants from drowning. Texas Congressman Chip Roy told Fox last week, channeling the old Dixiecrat South's massive resistance against Supreme Court ordered desegregation, quote, you tell the court to go to hell, you defend yourself and then figure it out later. It is a remarkable turnabout. Today's MAGA Republican Party has moved so far from its supposed law and order positions that congressional Republicans don't even care that Donald Trump, their forever president, endangered their own lives on January 6th. Nearly 200 of them have asked the high court to keep Trump on the ballot, denying in a brief filed with the court that the January 6th coup attempt was an insurrection at all. But three former Republican elected officials stand out in a party that is otherwise completely submissive to Trump, joining the ranks of those arguing to the Supreme Court that he is disqualified to appear on the ballot because he engaged in insurrection. They are former Massachusetts Governor William Weld, former New Jersey Governor Christine Todd Whitman, and former Montana Governor Mark Roscoe. Weld briefly opposed Trump for the Republican nomination in 2020, while Whitman has criticized the party as being replaced by the cult of Donald Trump. Governor Roscoe's past as head of the Republican National Committee gives him a special insight into the mindset of his party, although their brief makes clear their positions are not about politics. The filing notes that the three governors have been members of the Republican Party for decades. Their objectives in filing this brief are not partisan, but purely patriotic, motivated by their commitment to public service. The governors argue, should Mr. Trump be permitted to stand again for election to the presidency, despite his past actions, neither Section 3 of the 14th Amendment nor the oaths that undergird the bedrock premise that public officials serve to advance the welfare of the people and our common national project will ever be the same. They will have been rendered meaningless in their legal force and stripped of their moral authority and power. They will, in effect, have been written out of our Constitution. And former Governor Mark Roscoe joins me now on the phone. We had a little bit of camera trouble. So thank you for joining us on the phone, Governor. Um, I just want to know, just so that people sort of understand where you all come from, all three of you, uh, Governor Whitman, uh, as well as yourself, as well as uh, Governor Weld, former Governor Weld, come from states that have turned power over from one party to the other. Over the years, in 1989, a Democrat governed your state of Montana, then in 93, a Republican, you then as a Republican, and then another Republican, and then a Democrat. So the, the peaceful transfer of power is something you have all engaged in yourselves, at least your parties have. Tell me why you felt compelled to weigh in on this Supreme Court case against Donald Trump, or a Supreme Court case involving Donald Trump. 
Well, because it's a serious violation of the Constitution to ignore it. And the fact of the matter is that nobody has a right to run for office. We certainly have a right to vote if we qualify and haven't um, disabled ourselves from being able to vote, but we don't have a right to run. In order to run, the person that is the candidate has to prove that, in fact, they can meet the qualifications. So you don't get access to the ballot unless you meet the qualifications. The qualifications have been there uh, from the beginning of the Constitution, 235 years ago. Uh, you have to be more than 30, you have to be 35 years of age, you have to be native born, and you have to have been a resident of the country for the last 14 years. And then there is a fourth requirement that you have to meet in order to be eligible. And that is, you cannot have taken an oath to support the Constitution of the United States and thereafter involve, engage, countenance, incite, or in any other way be involved with an insurrection against um, the United States of America and against the Constitution.